Hey there, my friend who don't even have green grass at home, today we have updates on arrivals. New players for us to crush Celtic. Update on the Shankland saga at Rangers. Motherwell monster on his way to Glasgow. Fabrizio Romano drops a bombshell about Jose Mourinho, which opens up space for Rangers to sign a player coveted since January. Clement wants Fabio Silva again, after he was overlooked at Wolves. And the bombshell of the day, my friend, an outstanding midfielder who could become part of the Rangers Hall of Fame might be on his way. It's all right. Let's dive into the latest on the Rangers transfer front. So it looks like our interest in Rapid Bucharest's Albion Romani might be hitting a bit of a snag. The 23-year-old has openly expressed his desire to move to one of Europe's top five leagues, which, let's be honest, doesn't bode well for a switch to Ibrox. He was quite clear about it, saying, The new players are very good and we have a strong team now. Mr. Lennon is a very good coach with a very good game philosophy, which will help us to be better and better. I hope to reach the top five leagues in Europe. If a team offers something interesting for the club, I will talk to Mr. Suku. And if the offer is also in the interest of the club, I will make a choice. For now, I am a rapid player and I will give 100% for the team. Given this stance, it's time for Rangers to shift focus and ramp up the pursuit of Lawrence Shankland. Philippe Clement has had his eye on him, and for good reason. The heart striker, who netted a stunning 31 goals last season, is a tried and tested goal scorer in the Scottish Premiership. His familiarity with Scottish football means he can hit the ground running, unlike Romani, who would need time to adapt. Shankland, at 28, is in his prime. He's got the knack for linking play, creating space, and delivering in crucial moments, traits that make him a standout striker. Securing his signature would be a no-brainer, and something that fans have been clamoring for months. So with Romani likely off the table, all efforts should now be directed towards bringing Shankland to Ibrox. It's a move that not only makes sense, but is one that could pay off big time as we look to bolster our attacking options for the upcoming season. What do you reckon? Is Shankland the man to lead our line? Let me know your thoughts. All right, let's have a natter about this Theo Bear situation. Derek Ferguson isn't entirely convinced that Theo Bear has earned his stripes just yet for a move to Rangers, despite his cracking season at Motherwell. Now, according to The Athletic, both Rangers and Celtic are sniffing around the Canadian international with a few German clubs also interested. Fair play to him. He's turned some heads. But Ferguson reckons a lot of Bear's improvement is down to Stuart Kettlewell's magic touch at Motherwell, rather than the player suddenly finding his feet. Ferguson, in an exclusive chat with Ibrox News, said, I don't know because he struggled for a period at St. Johnstone. He looked out of sorts, gets to Motherwell, and I think a lot of that goes down to Stuart Kettlewell. He's done a really good job with him. I watched him three or four times last season. He's got a good physicality about him. I actually watched a game where he played against Dundee, and for the last half hour of the game, he was absolutely sensational, so you can see there is a player in there. But, and the big but is, why is a guy who's 24 not been picked up by a bigger club? Why did he struggle at St. Johnstone? So there's always a wee question mark for me there. You can see the ingredients are there, he's got the physicality and he can finish. But it's the whole thing that you'll hear me say and some of the other guys that have played with Rangers or Celtic, can you handle what goes with it? So that's the big question. But he's had a good season for Motherwell, but is that enough to entice Rangers to go for him? I'm not too sure. Bear had never bagged more than four goals in a season before, but last term he smashed it with 15 league goals. That's quite the turnaround. It put him behind only Desers, our very own James Tavernier, Celtics Matt O'Reilly and other linked strikers like Hearts captain Lawrence Shankland and Aberdeen star Bojan Miofsky. While Shankland or Miofsky might seem like safer bets if we can strike a deal, Bear could very well be a late bloomer. If he can keep up that Motherwell form, who knows? He might just surprise us all. So what do you think? Is Bear worth a punt or should we be looking elsewhere? Let me know your thoughts. So it looks like our search for more experienced heads is ramping up, especially after recent weeks have seen the transfer chatter quiet down a bit. Philippe Clement is hard at work trying to balance an imbalanced squad, and Niels Koppen's transfer strategy is clearly focused on getting the right mix of youth and experience. Now let's get to the juicy bit. Adama Traore. This lad from Ferencvaros is one of their standout players, and we've been linked with him for a while now. He's 29, got pace to burn, 
And crucially, he's consistent, something we desperately need on the wings. We were reportedly in advanced talks to bring him to Ebrox for around three and a half million pounds. But then, whispers of Fenerbahce sniffing around surfaced. However, those rumors have been squashed and here's where it gets interesting. The legendary Jose Mourinho has been busy, and Fabrizio Romano, the transfer guru himself, dropped a nugget that might work in our favor. Mourinho's landed Alan St. Maximin on loan from Al Ali, leaving the door wide open for us to swoop in for Traore. Clement recently mentioned that while we've been snapping up young talents, the window won't close without adding some seasoned pros. He said, We were focused on everything, but it is easier earlier to get the young players in. For the rest of the transfer window, there will also be experience coming into the building. We need a good balance in the squad and in the team of both. So, with Scott Wright possibly heading to Sheffield Wednesday, we're left with a bunch of inexperienced options on the wings. Traore, with his pace and consistency, could be the perfect addition. Imagine him tearing down the wing, providing the kind of threat that keeps opposition defenders up at night. And with Oscar Cortez back and fully fit, Clement has at least one player he can rely on. Adding Traore to the mix would give us another weapon, someone who's been there and done that. The door is open, and all Niels Koppen has to do is walk through and seal the deal. So, what do you think? Now you've probably seen the rumors floating around about Desers being linked with a move to Cagliari for about 4.2 million pounds. But our man Chris Jack has downplayed those links, suggesting there's not much substance to them. In his latest report for Rangers Review, Jack mentioned that there's nothing imminent in terms of new recruits for the Light Blues. So if you were hoping for some fresh faces in the next few days, it looks like we might need to be patient. He also noted that the suggestions of Cagliari closing in on Desires have been downplayed. Now let's talk about Desires himself. Despite last season being far from a classic for us, with Celtic getting the better of us in the title race and the Scottish Cup, Desires managed to make a decent impression. He stepped up as our main number nine, especially with Danilo's season being cut short due to injury. Felipe Clement has already made some moves in the transfer market, bringing in Hamza Igamane from Morocco. But with Desaires having had a relatively positive season, it might be a bit premature to let him go so early into his time at Ibrox. He's shown he can handle the pressure and deliver when needed, and losing him now could be a costly mistake. So, while the transfer rumors are always swirling, it seems like we'll need to wait a bit longer to see any concrete moves. And as for Desaires, keeping him could very well be the right call as we gear up for the new season. Clement has been pretty open about wanting to keep Fabio Silva. After bringing him in on loan in January, he mentioned he'd prefer to buy the young forward but couldn't because Silva was too expensive at the time. Despite Silva's modest return of six goals and 25 appearances, Clement clearly rates him highly and sees a future for him at Ibrox. Here's where it gets interesting. Silva has returned to Wolves, but he hasn't joined their preseason squad in Spain. Gary O'Neill. Wolves' manager called up 29 players for their preseason camp, and Silva was notably left out. This is a strong signal that Wolves are ready to offload him. Wolves paid a hefty £35 million for Silva back in 2020, but it's fair to say he hasn't lived up to that price tag. Recouping that fee is out of the question now, which means a cut price deal could be on the cards. This gives Rangers a golden opportunity to strike a bargain and bring Silva back on a permanent basis. For Clement, this could be the perfect chance to get a player he believes in without breaking the bank. Silva's potential and Clement's faith in him could make this a very shrewd piece of business for Rangers. This summer, Philippe Clement's got his work cut out for him, with almost every area of the team needing some serious attention. Injuries have plagued us in the past, but fingers crossed, the changes Clement's making will keep our best players fit and firing. One area we definitely need to bolster is the midfield. With Ryan Jack and John Lundstrom gone, and only Connor Barron coming in, we're a bit light in that department. We've been linked with players from all over, but one name that's come up recently is Le Havre's Usama Targaline. Now, according to Maxime Guy from Medane Foot, Leavre are keen to hold on to this lad. They've had a roller coaster season, but they want to extend Targaline's contract. However, they're going to have to work hard to keep him because we're interested too. 
Targaline's got a bit of Emery Khan about him. He's not just good at protecting the defense, but he's also composed on the ball, can build play from the back, and dictate the tempo. At 6-F1, he's got the physical presence to handle the rough and tumble of the Scottish game. We haven't had a proper playmaker since Stephen Davis. Lundström was a grafter, but he didn't have the vision or passing range we need in that position. With just a year left on his contract, Le Havre might be willing to let Targalin go for a reasonable price, which puts us in a strong position. We don't need to offload anyone before bringing him in because we're lacking a true number six. So, moving fringe players like Kieran Dowell and Jose Cifuentes shouldn't be a problem. What do you reckon? Could Targaline be the missing piece in our midfield? Let me know your thoughts and don't forget to like and subscribe for more Rangers updates. Cheers!